Welcome back. You're watching the game. Memphis big man Jaron Jackson Jr. has finally done it this season, leading the NBA with his defensive numbers. Let's talk more about his Defensive Player of the Year award with NBA High Post, the most offensive guy I know, oh my. Mikey Reyes. Let's talk about defense. I think I'm the worst. I'm the worst analysis, uh, analyst you can get at, with this segment, but. Jaren Jackson did his thing. Yeah, you know, Triple J, you take a look at uh, the, what he's done here. He had to get over Brook Lopez. He had to get over Ivan Mobley. What separated him compared to those guys? You know, especially from the outside looking uh, in, you're looking at it from a, you know, grand scheme, the grand scheme yeah. of things. Why do you think he came up on top? Well, you can't take anything away from the two, but they did it with other defensive guys, other premier defensive players without Steven Adams. Jaron Jackson did his thing. He really locked down on defense. He knows uh, Ja Morant and all those guys will be the one to score. So he knew his role and he did his thing. So, iba pa din, iba pa din because you can talk about Brook Lopez as well, Evan Mobley, but mag isa ke, you're really the anchor of that defense. Um, he's the number one shot blocker diba, in, yeah. in their team. Yeah. And the, the thing is, among the three, he's the only guy who can really guard. One to five, Perimeter, yeah. diba? Shane mm -hmm. likes to switch out. They're they're a heavy switching team, diba? And that's something that Mobley and Brooks to kumpo ka to anchor to yeah. parang to save you. Yeah, of course. And Jarrett Allen, the man, yeah. para sa Cleveland. Okay, um, how do you see him against the Lakers, though? Because malaki ang Lakers, especially with a healthy healthy Anthony Davis. You yeah. see Rui Hachimura just kill them the last yeah. game. So, uh, is he going to be an effective defender? A lone defender against no, no, LA. I don't. I don't think he can just. He can't guard everyone. Yeah. At, this, at, at the end of the day, it's gonna be. Ha it's gonna have. It's gonna take the whole team to play good defense against uh, a team with so many weapons. And damin dinagdag ng Lakers from that uh, trade deadline. And mm -hmm. it's gonna be tough. You're still gonna need uh, Stephen Adams in in this type of situation. In this type of series, you're gonna be. You're gonna need his toughness because at the end of the day, bata which they won't get. Yeah. They won't get. They won't get. Brandon so Clark and Stephen Adams. Really are gonna, out. It, it really hurt. And it's hurting them right now. It's going to be It looks tough. like it. He, yeah. can't, he can't defend everyone. L literally, they are literally, hurting, oh. especially with the, the John Morant injury. Too. Well, they, he did score well 31 points and five rebounds and four assists in their last game against the Lakers. Let's see if he does improve at least defensively there. But of course, there are other awards uh, up for grabs soon. And mm. let's, you know, a couple of questions here in terms of like the clutch player. Oh, mm -hmm. you're, you're more, this is more your wheelhouse. <laughs> You to pick a clutch player. <laughs> well, you get the volume. Okay, 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 okay. Jimmy Butler, DeMar DeRozan, or De'Aaron Fox, the candidates here. Well, De'Aaron Fox, as a stats-wise, he is the leading uh, in clutch. I think points. I know where your heart is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're a Butler guy. Vain Dog and Jimmy B. Right, right. So, especially in the playoffs. But again, this is a regular season award, it so is, you can't yeah. count the playoffs. But... Regular season, I think you can give it to De'Aaron because of the stats. The stats, yeah. Although, Miami has played the most clutch games mm -hmm. yes, in the regular true. season. I think the 55 sila of all the... And they have a winning record, yeah. by the way. So, yeah. I see where you're coming from. Um, do you have a candidate for sixth man of the year? Do you have a favorite for sixth man of the year? Uh, Emmanuel, quickly. From I'm going New York. Emmanuel, quickly, yeah. because... Okay. Well, magaling din naman si Brogdon. Magaling din naman yung mga yun. But I think with Emmanuel, quickly is... Umaakit yung numbers niya. He averages 14 points off the bench, 24 when he starts, and 26 when Brunson is out. So, mm. I like my sixth man to step up even, especially without the superstar. Because mm. kaya niya kahit siya yung nagiging focal point nung offense nila. And now, obviously, with those awards coming up, I want to focus back on uh, JJJ, especially what he could do with the Lakers, since uh, that's what we're going to be watching for in the in the next couple of days. Take a look at JJJ. If you, if Memphis are going to win, how big of a factor do you think he has to be on both ends of the floor, especially with Jamarant questionable and yeah. all those pieces missing on defense? Oh well, if he does deliver and they win the series against Lakers, you're gonna have to put him like I don't know. He's established himself mm -hmm. on both ends because he's gonna be tasked to guard one of the best players, maybe Anthony Davis, Rui, or whoever, and he's going to have to score against one of the tough defenses of the league with the Lakers. So It's going to be tough, man. If he delivers this series for Memphis, medyo aake talaga yung stock niya. Crazy. Validated. So Got to look at him differently. So yeah. right. Thank you very much for talking about defense on the show, Mikey. I tried. Really I tried. It. <laughs> appreciate it. It was weird. <laughs> I know. Good Mikey, to see you, and you can catch him, of course, on NBA Hype.